Hello everyone, welcome to Cloud Talks. In today's video, we are diving into hybrid connections and private links, two essential concepts that empower organizations to securely integrate data between on-premise environment and cloud applications. Whether you are an architect, a developer, or just curious about how the technology works behind the scene, this video is for you. So let's get started. First, let's demystify the term hybrid connection. Imagine you have critical data and application hosted both in your on-premise infrastructure and on the cloud. Connecting these two environments seamlessly while ensuring data security can be challenging. This is where hybrid connections come into play. They allow you to establish a secure and reliable communication channel between on-premise network and cloud resources. So let's explore this further. Let's look at this example. In this instance, a function app is trying to communicate with a SQL server, which is hosted in the organization's local data center. One of the key use cases of a hybrid connection is to allow secure communication between an on-premise network and the cloud without other private communication services, such as an express route or a site-to-site -site VPN. The hybrid connection allow traffic over a public internet using TLS, while the web app or a function app in this instance connects to a SQL server over the default SQL server port, which is 1433. It could be a different port uh, in case if you are using the named instance on a SQL server. Uh, so make sure that you uh, connect to a right port. Now let's change the scenario a little bit. Let's imagine that an organization does have access to an express route or a site-to-site -site VPN and can communicate between these two networks privately but they still want to use a hybrid connection over a private network. There could be a variety of use cases where organizations want to implement a hybrid connection over a private network. They may not want to open the entire network to Azure. They may want to securely communicate between the web app without making this data visible over the network. Or they just simply want to use a reverse proxy to air gap the network. So how we are going to achieve this? Let's look at it from an architectural perspective first. In this example, we have a web application hosted in Azure, which is trying to communicate with the SQL server hosted on-premise. To establish this connection, we need a few things. We need a function app that can communicate over a private network and we are going to use function app with a VNet integration. You can also use private links if you want. We need an Azure Relay service, and we are going to create a private link for this Azure Relay instance. We need to install a hybrid connection manager on a SQL Server machine. It is important to note here that this connection manager can be installed on a separate machine. And as far as it can communicate with the SQL Server, it won't be an issue. Now, as we are trying to access the Azure Relay over a private IP address, we also need to resolve this IP. And we are going to rely on an on-premise DNS server. But this DNS server needs to communicate uh, with Azure. So we are going to create a private DNS resolver. which will allow us to resolve IP addresses of a private DNS services that we are going to create in Azure. Once we have these services created, uh, we need to configure the connection manager and it will allow a seamless connection. So let's build this together. Okay, let me switch my screen. So here is my environment uh, to access Azure services over our private network. I'm using um, a 
point to site VPN instead of an express route, uh, which I've configured in the virtual network gateway. Uh, I also have a SQL Server virtual machine running uh, on my PC. Uh, and so I've got a SQL Server running on it. Uh, I'm also using that as my DNS server. And I have a hybrid connection manager installed on this machine. I will come back to this machine shortly. Uh, I also have created uh, a private DNS resolver. And if you go into this, uh, into an inbound connection, uh, it is configured to accept inbound connections. Uh, and this is the IP address that I'll be using down the track when I will be connecting uh, to a DNS server, which is hosted on premise. I also have got a function app uh, that I have uh, installed. And let's look at this function app. Uh, so you can see it's currently empty. There's no, there are no functions uh, configured. Uh, let's go into the networking. As you can see that uh, it is VNet integrated and it is connected to uh, my function app submit. And as you can see, the hybrid connections are currently switched off. Okay, so let's get started. So the first service we will create uh, is an Azure Relay. So let's create a service. So I've got a couple of services running, but let's just create a new one. We'll connect to my demo resource group. I'll call it demo service hybrid connection. And we will create this service. So while the system is creating the service, uh, I'll pause the video and I'll come back once the service is created. Okay, now uh, the service has been created. So let's uh, go into the service. Okay, as you can see uh, that the habit connection service has been created. Uh, let's go into the networking. And what we are going to do is we're going to disable the public network access. We'll click on allow trusted Microsoft services to bypass this firewall. Uh, click on save. Okay, it won't take that long. <coughs> Beautiful, that configuration setting has been done. Let's create a private endpoint for this service, given that the public access has now been disabled. We will call it a private endpoint relay and so we are keeping everything uh, to the default. Uh, we'll click on the virtual network. Uh, we will connect this service to my default subnet. And uh, we're going to select dynamically allocate an IP address. DNS, uh, we will use the Azure DNS uh, service. So it will integrate to a private DNS zone. Uh, and we will talk about the DNS uh, in a second. Okay, the validation test passed. Uh, it is going to take some time to create a private link. So I'm going to pause this so uh, this video and I will come back once uh, this is complete. Okay, now uh, the service has been uh, created. Uh, okay, so let's look at the DNS configuration. Uh, as you can see that now, uh, this Azure Relay has got a private IP address of 10.0.0.5 and it has got uh, a URL or a fully qualified domain name. Uh, let's take a note of this as we'll be using it a bit later. Okay, uh, the next thing 
is we will be configuring uh, a hybrid connection. But before we configure the hybrid connection, uh, let's just validate a few things. Uh, so let's jump into my SQL Server. We'll first check the name of the SQL Server, as you can see it here. Uh, we will also check the port. So I'll go into the SQL Server Configuration Manager. Let's just validate that. And uh, you can see that uh, I'm using a TCP port 1433. In case if you have a named instance, this port would be different. Cool. Uh, okay, let's go into the function app. And we will go into networking. Click on hybrid connection. Okay, so we will add a hybrid connection and create a new hybrid connection. We'll call it hybrid connection SQL. The endpoint host is the host name of my SQL server. So let me just copy that here. And the endpoint port is 1443, which is the default port of my SQL server. The service bus namespace, uh, we are going to use the existing one. This is the, the demo service hardware connection relay service that we created. So we select that and we click OK. Uh, this won't take that long. It hardly takes 30 seconds. So let's give it a bit of a time okay so i have got uh, this hybrid connection created uh, as you can see that the status is not connected the endpoint is the name of my sql server let's click on this and copy the connection string so let me copy the connection string and now let's jump on to my sql server okay the first thing that i need to do is to validate uh, that my vpn is connected as you can see it is connected in case if you're using an extra shroud or a site-to-site -site vpn you don't have to do that and now what I will do is I will create a DNS conditional forwarder to my hybrid connection service bus URL. So I want this name to be resolved uh, to an IP address and this IP address is going to be an IP address of my private DNS resolver, which is 10.0.2.4 so let's jump back into it and let's add this address 10.0.2.4 and we click OK let's validate this and just to flush the DNS and we do ns lookup for this. Voila. It's now you can see that it is resolving an IP address of 10.0.0.5, uh, which is an IP address of my relay service. So let's just look at this relay service and we go into networking. This is the IP address that it is resolving. So the next step is that I will configure the hybrid connection here. So we will enter it manually and the connection string that I copied before, I will enter this connection string, click add, And I will give it uh, 
a minute uh, in the meantime I refresh my service and I restart my service okay so now um, the SQL server hybrid connection has been connected uh, as it is showing the status of the connected let's just validate uh, from the Azure side as well uh, let's go into my function app and we go into networking and we click on hybrid connection and as you can see the status of the hybrid connection is connected uh, which means that now I have got an end-to-end -end connectivity between my function app and a SQL server over a private network. Uh, so obviously now you can write uh, your functions or your web application and you can have a private communication uh, between your Azure services and your on-premise infrastructure. I hope this is very useful for you. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions and I will try to answer them uh, as soon as possible. Thank you very much.